just really quick and this might be part of like a whole other week but i'm just curious if at some point you can talk about so everything you said here makes sense one of my um things that i'm still working on is when i blow it trying to reset quickly um because the horse i ride is extremely sensitive and if i don't reset quickly he immediately takes that as hesitation for whatever I'm asking, which I get, that's actually what I'm doing is saying, do it, don't do it. But also because a lot of when I blow it, it's something related to fear. And so what I don't want to do is bump my energy up in a, in a weird way that that's not the next message I want to send to the horse, but also just trying to get myself back to that positive mindset where I'm seeing gains. Um, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And like I'm beating myself up, if that makes sense. Yes, this is exactly what this is about. Absolutely. That's, it's perfect. So there's, um, that reset factor is something that we need to practice. And you can find just like the other stuff, maybe times in your, in, in your day where, you um, get a little bit off track and then bring yourself back into that, to that reset. So that's for me, um, when you, so if you're meditating, they tell, you know, you, you're counting your breaths. Um, and then all of a sudden you find you lose your count and your mind goes off. What do they tell you to do? Just start counting again. Don't beat yourself up about it. Just start counting again. So when you're riding and you're going along, it, you're, you're giving yourself little jobs, right? Or you're giving your horse little jobs. And so then you get off track and we make a mistake. We just come back to, to where you were before that happened it takes a lot of practice. The, the beating up um, process is that self-talk, that practicing our positive self-talk and not spending very much. No, nobody that is successful in any sport spends much time in the moment berating themselves. Now, we know that they all go back. If you're a baseball player, you go back, you look at tape, you watch, you know, how you, you're, you started middle of the game to get tired and your swing, you know, got a little bit off track or your posture wasn't good. And uh, you might look at it later, but in the moment, these guys make a mistake. They strike out or something like that. They have to and then go and be able to be at the plate without that in their mind. But this is not something that they were just born that way. This is something that they really, really, really practice and work on. So what would be, that's why I, I love having that replacement. If, um, if I make a mistake and then I have this negative, you always do it like that. I don't know why. Every time you make that mistake, you always do it like that. I need to have a replacement for that. Nice try. Let's do that again. We can make that better, right? We can do that better. And the more I find that I am taught saying in my mind, those words, maybe I even need to say them out loud. My body just calms down and gets back to work. And it, it takes time. I totally have been there. Like I have been there at the point where I go to the horse show and I can't, I couldn't feel my legs. How can I ride? How can I affect my horse nicely? 
How can I um, give the aids with the timing that I want? If I, I literally cannot feel my legs because I'm so uptight. And I did have to work through that. But I, you know, when I realized what was happening, I did not put my head in the sand about it. I mean, there's a lot of different choices you can make. You can pretend everything is fine. You could stop riding or stop showing. I mean, there's a lot of things you can do. Um, but I just said, I, this is something I'm really going to work on. And I did things outside of the riding too, that helped my body and my, I guess those parasympathetic reactions, right from taking over so that a lot of that tai chi and that meditation and stuff like that my body started liking being there more than in the other state and then i could bring it into that state even when i was in that stress little bit stressful situation but it takes it takes practice but awareness is the first step to making change absolutely it is so you know what you want to do. And I think that that speaks a lot to this, um, what we talked about tonight and just really, you know, to dig in and, and uh, tape, print it out, the notes, tape it up on your wall or in the tack box or whatever, and just remind yourself of those things because Though that turning that, um, you know, I'm not good at that yet. Turning, I can't do that into, I, I'm not good at that yet. That just changes everything. And when you start taking um, five minutes instead of eight minutes to reset, and then you take three minutes instead of five minutes to reset, and you can you, awesome job. Look at you. You're you know the heart rate came down. I I'm not shaking anymore. <laughs> I mean, listen, you can't. Con it's it's something that you have to talk yourself out of. It's something that you need to practice. It's not easy. Your body does stuff. Our bodies do stuff without permission, right? So, um, but re absolutely reward yourself every time. When and Dana knows exactly what we're talking about too. She's being very quiet, but she, you know she also have this. Um, uh, we we it, it happens to everybody, and and so when you you are going to find the tools, a lot right here in this webinar that work best for you, and. and I encourage that uh, outside of riding. I told you last year I was trying to get, get ready for the horse show and I had I could do my Tai Chi in the morning and my test wasn't till later in the afternoon one day. And I thought I was totally chill. And I thought I was like, you know, relax, everything good, had my whole plan. My, the horse was going great. And I tried to settle down to do 45 minutes of Tai Chi and I kept, my mind kept telling me all the reasons why I couldn't do it today. I had plenty of time. There was no reason, but you know, you just, things get going and you can't get yourself into that. I, I, I made myself do it and the ride went fabulous. And I think part of the reason was, um, that I did that, you know, that I settled down into that, but that try to find other things in the day where you can practice that reset and it will it will come also faster in the riding too absolutely it will and the the um talking out loud what you know to yourself or to pretend you're talking to your horse and then yourself is listening too <laughs> It's so much easier for us to tell the horses they did something good. And you know, the other thing that's interesting is that um, that was my fault, right? When the, when the horse makes a mistake, 
We're always there to, oh, oh, that was my fault. And I am not one to blame the horses. I also think that it's not healthy for us to run to that. That was my fault quite as quickly, right? It was just a mistake. It, it's, it's not, it doesn't need to be a fault. It doesn't need to be that we berate ourselves. Um, so, you know, just maybe we needed to explain things better. The horse misunderstood. Maybe the horse had something else in mind altogether and actually was, was not planning to listen. But I think that that, um, uh, as much as I will say that, um, and I don't want to blame the horse. I just think no blame should be there at all. That, there does not need to be those words. That was my fault. Yes, of course. Of course. It's all our fault. But that's that's not a healthy self-talk either. Oh, let's try that again. Um, you know, what? whatever. We, we, it's, we always have another chance. We're just practicing. Um, you know, that these kind of things instead of that, that berating and it's so comes so quickly. We can't, you know, so that's, we need to, this is why I think those affirmations, affirmations are not about creating some miracle out of nothing, but affirmations are really opening ourselves up to the possibility that things are going to go well, right? We're looking for, if you're, if you're going to buy, if you want to go buy a new car and you want to buy, you know, whatever, a Porsche Boxster, you're driving down the road, you're going to notice every single Porsche Boxster that's driving down the road. You never saw them before. You never even knew there were so many Porsche Boxsters where you live but you want to buy one. Now you've got that radar out for it. And it's the same with everything life. So if we are having the radar out for our mistakes, we're going to get more and more mistakes. We're going to notice more and more our mistakes and they are going to fill up our rides more than the good stuff. If we have the radar out for our wins, then we're going to end up noticing more and more the times it goes right. And we're going to get more and more of that. 